A great way to get restarted on your weight loss journey is to just implement green smoothies for breakfast. That's it. I'm only going to have green smoothies. And um, I'll say it again because people are confused. Green smoothies for breakfast. Not green smoothies in addition to your breakfast, you know. It's green smoothies as your breakfast. That's all you're going to have. And yes, I know if you're a weight loss surgery patient, you might not be able to drink the whole container. Yes, you can sip it throughout the morning. But green smoothies pretty much for breakfast, okay? Um, so let's get started. We're out here in my garden and I'm going to pick my leaves for my green smoothies, okay? Now I can tell already right here, these salads, these are wonderful, here you go, mini romaine red tips there. It's, this area is probably too hot for them, so they're starting to really melt away. So I better harvest these, even though these look nicer and are good right over here they're they're in the shade so they're being protected i'll just take a couple of these anyone know what this green is this is a japanese uh herb a japanese lettuce sa salad called mizuna totally delicious it has a crazy flavor it's really spicy so i'm only going to take one of them um this is curly kale which is great it's called prism it's a I haven't grown this variety before. It's called Prism. But um, kale, when it's in a blender, for whatever reason, makes my tongue itch. <laughs> but I can eat it. There's purple kale. I can eat it raw, and I can definitely eat it cooked. Now, this purple kale started off that purple, and now as it's growing out, it's getting less and less purple, which I think is kind of not cool. So I know that this area is getting too hot, Here's actually two plants. So I'm probably going to lop this off and actually end up pulling this out because I, I don't want to just sit here and watch this look pathetic and die. I'm probably going to um, pull it up and plant something in these two spots. These are doing okay. They're shaded by the um, tree here. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and harvest all of this come back later pull this out of the ground you know what this is not quite enough salad so this side this is that Japanese red mustard this is where I was throwing the uh, uh, throwing the snails I'm gonna use that you can add a little Thai basil if you want here's cilantro if you want some this is call this is a uh, Brussels sprouts my first time growing Brussels sprouts I grew them too close together but you can totally use the leaves of the Brussels sprouts. Like if I wanted to, I could pick this leaf and that's edible. All right, here's some arugula, which is a little too, pretty spicy. I'll put a little arugula in my, all right. So I have a nice blend here of greens for my um, salad, for my smoothie. I'm gonna get this Japanese bad boy here. This is this uh, pak choy. We'll get one of those. So, check this out. Got this beautiful blend of fresh greens from my garden. And it's got a huge variety of it. And it's in this variety that you're gonna find all your nutrients. And that's what makes green smoothies super, super powerful. Uh, I've washed my greens and rinsed them out for you. And this is a cool blend, right? Now, if you're in an area that uh, where you can't garden yet or you don't have space for a garden, you can totally grow lettuces inside in a little container, like on a pot, yeah, in a pot, um, and just have it right here on your countertop. And that would be awesome next to a nice bright window. Uh, then in the mornings, you would just pluck off the lettuce leaves, put that into your salad. Alternatively, I often use things like this, which are pre-boxed organic uh, baby greens like that the spinach this box is getting old it's kind of gone bad on me on the back so that i don't throw that away i throw that into my garden into my compost right okay so now the first thing you're going to need for a smoothie is an emulsifying blender okay so you can use a regular blender if it has a um a uh, smoothie function on it but I like the Nutri Ninja. I've had this one for years, and I'm not sponsored. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. But I use the smoothies blender almost every single day, 
to make smoothies for myself and for my daughter and I've had it for five years, four years, and I almost use it every day. It's my most often commonly used appliance. A Nutri Ninja works, a Nutri Bullet works, that, those are a little bit pricier. Uh, a Vitamix would be excellent. Just make sure it has a smoothie function on it, okay? Now, so you need a combination of a solid base and a liquid base. So the solid base is gonna be your greens. That's what makes a green smoothie. Green is not the color. We're actually gonna make a purple smoothie today. And, um, and, a, and a liquid, all right? And you can use any liquid you want. I prefer non-dairy liquids, because dairy's not good for you. You all know that, don't act surprised. <laughs> so, um, I like to start with a banana, okay? Banana adds good sweetness to it. So oh, there's no sweeteners. Do not put any fucking sweeteners in your smoothie. I'm so tired of people asking, what about, what if I use stevia, Dr. Vong? Ugh. You don't need it. If you need sweeteners in your smoothie, you got more fucked up shit going on. Cause that means like you have a really major sweet tooth because of all the sweeteners you're so used to using. So cut that out of your diet, I promise you. All right, so it comes with a cup like this. Put in a banana. Dr. Vong, I can't have a banana because I'm a diabetic. Yes, you can, trust me. It really re spikes my blood sugars. No, the donut you're gonna eat spikes your blood sugars. All right, so use half a banana if you want, if you're trying to cut down the carbs or, um, or the, for the diabetics. I use the whole banana, that's just me. Now listen, I don't throw this away. I have a bag here with my organic waste that's gonna go into my garden. So now I take this peel, put it into my little bag here on the countertop. Now, if you're really concerned about your blood sugars or you're trying to be low carb, I can do a different video on low carb, but you can use uh, avocado. Now, what's the problem with avocado? You probably have the same problem with avocado like I do. I mean, you buy this cool, nice, deep, black avocado, it's beautiful, and then you turn your back to it <clears throat> and uh, it's, 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 it's spoiled. <laughs> it's overripe and you gotta throw it away. So instead, you can go to your stores and you can find frozen avocado chunks. This makes it super nice, okay? Um, and this will make it real thick. So if you use avocado, you're gonna have to add more liquid because it kinda, it makes like that avocado mousse almost. So it's really thick and smoothy, it's thick and smooth, okay? So it only takes a couple chunks. So because I have the banana in there, I'm only gonna couple, put a couple pieces of avocado. Now obviously if I had cut up a fresh avocado, this would have been you know, only half of one side of it. So I would have ruined, I would have wasted the other half. So I like to use avocado because um, it really has those healthy fats that you need. And if you have a young one, uh, make sure you throw in some frozen avocado because they need it for the, their developing brains, right? All right, now at this point, you can add any frozen fruit you want. And I use frozen fruit because one, it's easier to store. And then two, um, you don't have to use ice cubes because the frozen fruit acts as your ice cube. In this case, it's just gonna be a simple bag of berries, blueberries. Remember, frozen fruit is picked when they're really, really ripe, so they're full of nutrients, and they're full of sweetness. And um, I like blueberries. You can get mixed berries, here you go. And if you're diabetic, you wanna go with like, all your, your berries are all good for you. So your blueberries, your cherries, your pitted fruits, your mixed berries, raspberry, blackberry. I say, I say all your berries are good for you and people will comment, well, what about raspberries, Dr. Vong? I said, all your berries are good for you if you're diabetic. But what about blackberries, Dr. Vong? All your berries. So blueberries, blackberries, and then all your pitted fruits are lower in carb and lower in sugar too. So your pitted fruits like cherries, plums, nectarines, what about apricots, Dr. Vong? All your pitted fruits. So apricots. So if you're trying to, if you're diabetic, you wanna avoid the melons. Those are too much sugar for you. So watermelon. What about cantaloupe, Dr. Vong? That's a melon, avoid your melons. So, um, but I like cantaloupe in my smoothie. It's super, super sweet. So if you have a sweet tooth and you don't really care about the carbs, then um, use cantaloupe as your sweetener. Really, really sweet. Okay, so I've got this. 
Now, I'm going to shove my greens from my garden in there at the top. So why do I put the greens in last? It's because when I, this, I'll turn this upside down, I'll turn this cup upside down, and the weight of the frozen stuff will, will blend, will push the greens down into the emulsif, into the blade. Oh, my little three-year-old here is here to help me. Hi, Mason. Mommy. Where's mommy? She's in there. Go get her. Okay. So, here we go. We have the greens over here. Alright. Now, at this point, see, this is basically a freaking salad. <laughs> it is a delicious salad. So, green smoothie is you're drinking a salad. Alright. Now, at this point, you can add any of your protein powders. If you're worried about protein, you can use a vegan protein powder. I would recommend you using a flavorless powder. I know that you know the bariatric community is big on their chocolate powders and their vanilla powders and all this sort of stuff, but you don't need it with a green smoothie. Just get a flavorless one, a vegan one. If you're trying to be vegan, you can use pea powder, P-E-A, don't pea, not P-E-E, P-E-A, P-E-A powder uh, is a nice vegan one. Um, or you can just skip it, it's up to you, okay? Now, what I want to show you today is a, a nice vegetable called Moringa, M-O-R-Ringa, Moringa powder. And uh, I'm going to give you a video uh, later uh, showing you the Moringa tree. It's really, really cool. So, let me read the back. It says, meet Moringa, the super green, more nutritious than kale. Kale, yeah. A good source of iron, calcium, and fiber. Moringa is one of the most nutrient-dense plants on the planet, known as the tree of life. Didn't they have the tree of life in, like, Lion King? I don't know. Many find it beneficial for detoxification and to manage post-workout inflammation. Or was that Avatar? Tree of life, Avatar. Post-workout inflammation. So for people who are working out a lot, you want to try some Moringa powder. Uh, Coolie Coolie sources only... Oh, that's this brand. All right. So this is sustainable, sustainably grown Moringa powder, right? And let's read, Dr. Vaughn, read the nutrients for me. All right, so 21 servings per container. This is one scoop, right? Yeah, no fat, basically, no cholesterol, no sodium. Five grams of carbs, so low carbs. Diet, three grams of dietary fiber, which is 11% of what you need. Uh, protein, three grams. So you're gonna get three grams of protein in here. It has uh, calcium, iron, uh, potassium, vitamin, and A, and magnesium. So it's got these naturally occurring um, uh, vitamins in them and, and minerals. And they're just part of the tree, of the plant. They're not uh, artificially introduced. So I'm just going to struggle here a little bit trying to open the bag. All right. Now, how much do you put in, Dr. Vaughn? So Moringa powder, smell the vision. <laughs> It smells like grass jelly. If you've ever, if you have ever had any Vietnamese friends and they, they give, they serve you grass jelly. It smells a little bit like grass jelly, uh, or freshly mowed grass. So I don't actually measure it. I just kind of dip it out. And my Ringa powder also, let me see. There you go. How much, how, how grassy do you want? Now I've got these fresh lettuce, lettuces from my garden. So it's going to be pretty grassy right there. Right there. Good. <laughs> Do you love your grass jelly? Have you ever had grass jelly from your Asian friends? <laughs> uh, I used to, when I was a little kid, and my white friends would come over, we would give them grass jelly, and they were like, ew, what is this? <laughs> so Moringa powder, check it out. Super nutritious for you. Um, a great addition uh, to your green smoothies. Um, a better way of getting nutrients um, in a powder form than just using artificial man-made protein powders. Okay, so now you need, here's your, here's your solid base, now you need a liquid base. And I like to use soy milk, <clears throat> okay? It doesn't matter what brand, I like to use soy milk. Dairy's not good for you, we all know that. Don't act, don't act silly, don't act surprised. Dairy is very inflammatory. Yes, cheese. Yes, yogurt. Yes. <laughs> well, I got it. What about yogurt, Dr. Vaughn? Yes, yogurt. But what about Greek yogurt? Yes. <laughs> so too much of it is going to be very inflammatory, but drinking a glass of milk a day is going to be really bad for you. 
So I'm gonna use soy milk. And no, soy milk does not cause breast cancer. What about it's bad for your thyroid? No, it's not bad for your thyroid. How can you be sure, Dr. Vong? I don't know, I just am. All right, so. So how much soy milk are you gonna put in there? Well, it depends because it depends on how how thick it ends up being and how thick you want it to be. Like if you just had weight loss surgery and liquids are tight, put a lot of liquid in here. Don't put so much fruit because you want it real thin. Now, if you're further out and you are one of these people who struggle with hunger, you gotta put the lid on nice and tight, then make it a little bit thicker so it stays in your pouch a little bit longer. All right, come on down here to the emulsifying blender. Woot woot. And let's do this. Three, two, one, oh. The other mistake people make is they don't blend it long enough. They think like that's okay. You see all the chunks in there? See the chunks? I wanna get rid of all that. What I like to do is also kind of tap it, turn it up like this, tap it, make sure you get some of the, any green stuck on there down. Pretty good, looking better there, huh? One more hit. All right, here we go. Time for taste test. Now we're gonna open this up and let's see. And let me grab a spoon. So again, you want to, um, You want to decide, like, how thick do you want it? Do you want it really runny? See, that's pretty thick. Oh, that's nice. See, that's about how I like it. That's about how I like it. So, for those of you who, who are new to green smoothies, that's about, hmm, it's about like a, a melted milkshake. You know when a milkshake, when you first get the milkshake, it kind of sticks on the end of the spoon. Don't lie, you know what I'm talking about. But then, <laughs> if you let it sit for a little bit, and it gets a little bit runnier, let's have a taste test. First off, we're gonna smell it. You know, it's weird. If you're new to green smoothies, I would start with a green that's really mild, like spinach, really mild. This, I can, I can definitely smell my, my mizuna in here, and that arugula. That, my arugula went to uh, bolt it, so that's really spicy. It's good. It's really good. Your life will change. Add green smoothies into your life and your life will change. <laughs>